You don't need to like or know about chess to enjoy Wizard Chess, a new roguelike game that is an early access on Steam. I've been playing it over the last couple of weeks, getting to grips with all of its different mechanics and idiosyncrasies, and I'm really enjoying it the more that I play. And the more I play, the more I uncover, and the more I go, ah, and start scratching my chin. So it's definitely a game that continues to give and give and give, as you find out that every run is really unique and different, and constantly keeps you on your toes. So what is Wizard Chess? It's going to take me a little bit to explain all of the mechanics, so please bear with me, but... I promise you it's worth the wait. <laughs> in Wizard Chess you play as the blue team and you control the bard and all of his or hers characters. The bard essentially acts like the king in chess and if the bard gets taken and defeated then it's game over and you're battling against the yellow team who are trying to survive and not get their boss killed either. Each run starts off with a procedurally generated map, like Overboard, full of loads of different cubes, and there'll either be battles of different sizes, which will bring in a certain amount of characters from your fleet into battle against the opponent, or it could be shops where you can then buy upgrades to your characters or new characters to be added to your deck, or there are a variety of other little miscellaneous things around, like being able to swap things out or have an exchange or a bartering system, things like that. But the main crux of this game is taking your fleet into battle and trying to beat the opponents. Now, the reason why it's got chess in the title is, at least to begin with, a lot of the pieces in your army move like chess pieces into these, again, procedurally generated dungeons for each battle that you take in. So it's not a perfect square. So you'll have uh, some things that will move only horizontal and vertical, some will move only diagonally, some will do the little L shape like the horsey horsey does in chess, um, some have the ability to move anywhere but only a couple of squares and some don't move at all like the archer but can point their fire to different places so it starts off with chess but goes way beyond and the longer you play the more types of units you start to find and buy in the shop so that they then start getting added to your arsenal as you go along and therefore will crop up in the rng for every time you start a new run because again you're getting all of your uh, deck pulled and at you at random that you're then going to have to deal with. So you'll take these characters into battle and each character it goes one move for you one move for the opponent back and forth back and forth and the idea is obviously to kill off all of your opponents and not get killed yourself. Each character has an attack, a defense and a skill level and the attack is obviously how much damage they'll make and Depending on the type of unit that you're moving, that might be that they need to be moved next to someone to do it. Or if they're ranged ones, like the javelinas or archers, they don't need to be, they need to be like a couple of squares back. And they need to be set up to make that move in advance. So again, you're leaving yourself open to being damaged if you've kind of put yourself in the wrong place. The defence is how much HP you can take being hit on in a single round or turn. So this doesn't deplete over time, um, and so say if you start off with 10 defence and someone hits you for 5, you've not got 5 left. You just can't be hit more than 10 in a single turn. So if someone does 10 or 11, you die, that piece or unit is removed from the game, and you'll never get it again. <laughs> again, roguelike to the core. The other third thing, and the real nuance in this game that took me a while to get used to, is the skill metric. Now every single unit has its own unique skill. So the bard, which is like your king in chess, can't be taken otherwise it's game over, cannot attack anyone or doesn't at least start off with any attack. Um, but what it can do is give with its skill um, a bonus defence and potentially attack to everyone that's standing in a square around it. So it makes sense to keep your units close to your bard so that they feel extra powered up. There's another one um, which allows you to swap places with everyone who like it looks like a little like cross-legged Buddha genie uh, character and like it doesn't have any attack out of the bag but what it does do is when you swap pieces with someone you can swap that piece and move it into a weird situation and then that piece because of the skill that you've got confuses the piece that you've just swapped with so it's lowered its 
attack. So you can do that and put it in an awkward place and then have someone attack it and then it's polished off and game over for that character. There's other ones as well, such as like the dog that can yap and push everything back. Um, all different types of enemies. And it goes way, 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 way beyond just the general chess pieces. And it's understanding how those skills all work in unison together with the characters you've got to make sure that you can then kill off your opponents. This takes a lot of time, practice, effort, and intricate understanding of each of the pieces. Because yeah, straight out of the bag, you can just move things around and, and kind of get a few wins here and there. But it wasn't until all of those skills started to click with me that I really got to grips with just how good and how well put together Wizard Chess is. It also leaves it quite open-ended for you as well, because you can, in theory, just keep on strengthening a very small core selection of characters. But as you're moving through this overworld map, clearing different battles, opening up shops and so on and so forth, you're going to be working towards this boss at the end. And the boss comes with about eight or nine different characters. And the main reason why you get something killed on your team in Wizard Chess is that you've left yourself open to an opportunity where you can be tag teamed by two different attacks at once because you might have a health of eight and everyone else's like attack damage is just five so you think oh well, I'm okay I'm safe I just need to work out a right positioning but if you get it slightly wrong and move yourself into an awkward position then something else will just come in trigger off a skill which might boost someone else's attack up to like two sixes but they're either side of you and they'll both attack together and then you'll get killed off that way so you need to always be like where do i position what do i go next what have i left myself open to just like chess but obviously you're dealing with all of these different skills and all of that kind of stuff in the background too it's really really engaging and the more i play the more engaged i become and i think that's a real true testament to good game design but also good roguelike design as well because sometimes you can get quite fatigued with runs that are only going to last 15 to 20 minutes per go and so you kind of you're relying on that uh, procedural generation element of it and also just constantly being engaged with every single battle feeling like it's meeting you where you're at and this brings me to the other real kind of aha thing around how wizard chess does difficulty now when you first start off with the game your opponent and yourself are ranked as rank j j goes all the way through up to a and the idea is that if you beat that specific character in the game you level up but so does the enemy so you start off with a J rank. Once you kill the J rank person, you'll then earn XP that will move you slightly up towards I, but they'll level up to I as well. So they come with pieces that are heavier in terms of damage and HP and skill, but they also start making much more savvier decisions around how things work as well. And so as you get better and understand the nuance and intricacies of the game, the computer is ramping up its stuff as well. And I think that's such a superb way of dealing with difficulty because if you don't win, no one levels up. And so it's constantly a challenge that's going to keep you on your toes until you win. And then it's like, okay, you think you've done that? Try this rank. <laughs> and then it's like, oh no. Um, and then to combat that fatigue as well, as you level up, it gives you different options of starting uh, units so you'll start off with like a selection of basic ones but then what it will do is it will then unlock a different set so that they could be like the warrior set for example are all quite aggressive and then there's like a more defensive type one um, then there's ones where you're having to rely on a lot of skills to try and make things work together rather than just going in purely on an at attack it really opens up and shows you that different playing styles are worthy of knowing and getting to grips with and understanding all of its intricacies because they're all viable. And then inside that, you can just take on 
a couple of units and really, really pump them up so that they're quite powerful. Or you can go for security in numbers and maybe not spend quite as much of your currency leveling up characters, but having several of them so that you're boxing characters in or opponents in so that you can one two punch them. Now, obviously, you're going to lose some casualties along the way and you need to make sure that you play strategically to keep them all alive to the end. But all of those um, tricks are viable and there's nothing wrong with like having one OP person trying to prop up the rest of the team if that works for you with that run. However, you can also have nine people running around with really low stats just trying to box everyone in and both work. I am really enamoured with this game. Um, there are a couple of things, obviously, because it's in early access where I ran into some issues. The main one is that the options menu inside the game doesn't close. <laughs> so if they could fix that at some point, that would be fantastic. Just don't open the options because you have to cancel out of your run because I can't close it again um, afterwards. Outside of that, though, like this game is shaping up to be absolutely superb and they're adding more and more all the time, the two people that are developing this. I'm a big fan. I'll be coming back to this time and time again and watching it develop and evolve uh, into a fantastic roguelike, which it already has the basis to do already. So, yeah, two thumbs up for me. If you're interested in roguelikes, some interest in chess, but totally not required. If you want juicy runs with proper strategy and a lot of open-endedness around how you go about it, Wizard Chess should be very high up your agenda and list to buy. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.